Hey everybody, today we are in South Carolina at Swan Lake Iris Gardens. It's the home of all eight species of swans. It's the only place in America that has it. So are you ready? Yes. Let's go. So that right there is the layout of Sawan Lake Iris Gardens in Sumter, South Carolina. So this is one of the many sculptures they have here. This little girl has just been sitting here for years. So it says here, please do not feed the wildlife. And the reason it says that is because they're on a special diet. A lot of people want to bring bread out here, but if they catch you doing that, it's like the sound system will come on and say, do not feed them. So whatever you do, do not feed the swans. And just look at all of them coming up. It's like they know they're being videoed. They're like, put me on YouTube, put me on YouTube. I think what it is, they see the food. Yep. That's the most I've seen here in a while. There's salt coming up. I know. This is so exciting. It's like all of them just came up. Oh, that one says I'm gonna get on it and eat it. Chasing each other. So 
So they also have these talking tree paths here. And it tells you different things if it works. Hello, oh, I'm does. a wax myrtle. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is named after me. I'm resistant to salt spray, so I could grow there in thickets so dense you could hardly get to the ocean. You can find me growing from sand dunes to swamps all through the southeast. My crushed leaves are fragrant, and my tiny blueberries are boiled for the wax that perfumes bayberry candles. Many birds eat my fruits, including myrtle warblers and red-bellied woodpeckers. In 1699, early colonists in Williamsburg, Virginia, planted me for my loose and graceful form. Well, that was rather exciting information. Like people, they were there fighting each other. There's a butterfly. So here's some of the iris right here. This is also what Swan Lake is known for. As you know, there are Swan Lake iris gardens and there's some iris. So this particular sculpture is called Recovery and it's by Granger McCoy. And it says this sculpture represents the right wing of a pintail duck in its recovery stroke. This theme evolved from a wing position that is considered the weakest in bird flight yet in the artist's eye is the position with the most beauty and grace. All of us are in recovery somewhere in our lives, as is our environment or which Swan Lake is a unique part. Such a beautiful sculpture. Mom just saw that this bench she was just sitting on is in honor of Granger McCoy by Edmonds High School class of 1965. So I mainly came today to see the azaleas and I think I pretty much missed them, but these over here are still blooming. just really hard to gauge when the azalea is going to be in bloom. Some years they've been blooming in February, sometimes March, sometimes April. So it's kind of hard to nail the exact time that you need to come. Especially whenever you're out photographing everything else. So mom has just noticed that this is the buckeye tree right here. Says red buckeye. We're both called bays, but sweet bay with its silvery backed leaves is a magnolia, 
a deciduous cousin to the larger southern magnolia, with smaller but equally beautiful and fragrant flowers. Even in winter, my smooth, light-colored trunk is decorated with patches of lichens who make their home there. Because of my smaller size, I'm planted in many southern gardens to provide fragrance in early summer. Red Bay has wonderfully aromatic leaves that can be used in cooking. The spice bush, swallowtail butterfly larvae often feed upon my leaves. The small bluish fruit are a favorite of turkey, songbirds, and quail, and deer will happily browse upon my evergreen leaves. Look at me carefully. I may be following the path of the American chestnut and disappearing from our woodlands because of a fungus carried by an imported beetle. We are the most prevalent understory trees, especially in coastal woodlands. The name comes from my sweet tasting gummy sap. The Mayan Indians burned my sap to make a pleasing incense. My range begins in Guatemala, Central America, and continues to Virginia. I'm one of the first trees to colonize abandoned fields. Now, you won't find me growing in many home lawns because of my seed balls that are covered with prickly spines. If you look on the ground, you'll probably find some of my old seed balls. But quail, morning doves, and cardinals love to eat those tiny seeds. In the fall, I'm one of the most colorful trees with burgundy, orange, red, and yellow often all on the same tree. My seeds drive gardeners mad, but my purpose is to change bare earth into forest. Sweet gum balls. Yep. get up close and personal so you came on over here. <laughs> That is pretty. All the irises are starting to pop out. So over here we have a swan on the nest and they've got her protected, which she needs to be. You know how so many cute little baby swans and the baby swans are just out of this world cute. I don't know why anybody ever called them the ugly duckling because they are not ugly at all. They're so precious whenever they're little. They've changed this since the last time I've been back here. I guess it's been a while. This used to not exist. 
This over here did, but not this over here. I always thought that little spillway was so cute. So there's only a little bit of azaleas left back here, but a little bit's better than none. Oh, that was around flight. The azalea probably got burnt. That box we had come down. Yeah. So this back here is the side of the trail. And I think it's one of the most beautiful sections of the park. Because you just get to stroll along, show them pace. These beautiful old trees right here, standing beside you. That bird is so beautiful in that tree. Now it's walking. I'm hoping it's showing up. There's only so far you can go with a cell phone. And then I don't have my big lens on my real camera today either. So I can't really get a close picture. But maybe it's showing up. And you also have this little tiny boat dock out here as well. So this is a swan sanctuary. And it says please come in and observe. So I think we shall do that. Is the most common swan in the U.S., the whistling swan, is also known as the tundra swan. And the average weight of the female is 13 and a half pounds, and males are 15 and a half pounds. And this one says the black neck swan migrates to the northern hemisphere after breeding in the southern third of South America and the Falkland Islands. So those are right there. So now we're in the butterfly garden. And this shows the life cycle of a butterfly. Can I get there? That's not really Well, mom says it must be wet. It is wet. So, I was gonna let her be a butterfly. You can take it in the butterfly garden. We are in the butterfly garden. We are? Yes. But I'm just not sitting on that. It's gonna be a butterfly too. 
You got your wings. <laughs> got my wings behind me. And here I come. Just do like this. <laughs> So this up here is a bathroom. They have bathrooms everywhere here. So if you do come, feel assured you can go to the restroom. So now we're coming up on the covered bridge that's over the water. I like it. This tree right here is absolutely gorgeous. That thing is in full bloom. Up there it says no horses allowed on bridge. I don't know who's bringing their horse in here, but it's very interesting if you do. Oh, yes, check out the irises! So beautiful. So this says that Camellia Island was created in 1989 as part of the repairs necessi necessitated by Hurricane Hugo. The island features mature specimens of Camellia japonica planted in the 1940s by H.C. Bland, Swan Lake's first horticulturist and designer. Their colorful blooms or blossoms draw visitors throughout the winter months. In recent years, the garden staff installed an avenue of Miami and crepe myrtles whose beautiful trunks and summer flowers enchant every season of the year. Sumter Master Gardeners, which I think they maintain the whole park on those roof, as far as the flower part of it. And the city of Sumter does everything else. And this is also the Boreal Garden. So as you can see, this right here tells you what this is, and this down here, if you can read Boreal, that would tell you everything that the sign says, which I think is pretty cool. It says welcome to the Swan Lake Sensory Garden for the visually impaired. And it's got all the braille down there as well. So obviously, like usual, I just did that whole trail in reverse. <laughs> garden I can get behind. This is the chocolate garden. It says this plot of land is dedicated to the young and young at heart who love anything chocolate. Our plants will give off a chocolate fragrance or resemble the chocolate color with the occasional Neapolitan colors added for interest, contrast, and fun. So that's one I can get behind right there. Have their Hershey's kisses back here. Let's 
sweet chocolate bench. So now we're going to start seeing all the different varieties of swans. This is the trumpeter swan. That's one of them. over there which is obvious and this is the royal mute swan i think this is the one you see the most of here well one of the ones you see the most of anyway and that's the black neck swan I saw quite a few of those a few minutes ago at the sanctuary. This is the whistling swan and it says this is the most common swan in the US. This is the black swan. It says its native breeding area is Australia. This is the whooper swan. And I'm gonna tell you something about this swan. This is a very mean swan. Every time I see it, it tries to attack me, which it has not attacked me today. And I've seen this thing come full face to face with somebody trying to get a water bottle before. So if you see that one, leave that one alone. It's just mean. This is the Cascorba swan. I think that one's cute. They have a couple of those here. And then they also had the Bewick swan. And it was named for engraver Thomas B. Wick, who was a native to northern Russia from the some kind of deltas. Anyway, that's all your swan varieties. And there's a beautiful little fountain right there. So we pretty much came full circle back to the front. But now we're going to go across the road and see the other part of it. So whenever you come to this, this is the crosswalk to get across from the main side to the other side. So they do have an elevator or stairs, whichever you prefer. obviously took the elevator but it doesn't shut on me and this gives you a nice aerial view of the park up here then 
and you get the joy of walking over the road. It does not bother me like it once did. I used to have to run across this thing. It looks like people are starting to put their locks up here. Pretty sure they won't let those stay too long. get a beautiful aerial view up here as well. So it says, caution, swan habitat, please observe, but do not disturb. The swans and other birds can be aggressive. That is true. Looks like it's drying up over here too. Usually they have a lot of water. a hard bench to get to, I think. <laughs> All those cypress knees down there. So as you can see, the boardwalk goes to the right here. There's really not much to see back there, but I'll walk a little bit of it because you have to end up walking back in this direction anyway to get back to where you're going. It doesn't loop around, it just stops. But as you can see, it's boy, not boo, beautiful. <laughs> And then back here, you can either go right or left, but like I say, any way you go, you still got to come back in this direction, so. I'm 
That's how it looks to the right. And that's how it looks to the left. So now we're coming to the end of this boardwalk on this side. And there's a couple of swans down there saying hi. And for some reason, it's extremely dry on this side. Maybe they're having to drain the pond or something. I don't know. And you can see some sculptures back there as well of the swans in flight. But I'm not walking back there because it's probably boggy. So as you can see, they have iris on this side of the street also. And I'm gonna get into the history of that once I get back to the car, because once again, I took my notes. It's a pretty interesting story, actually. I need to make sure I come back in a couple of weeks at least. I used to come here all the time. I don't come so much now, I guess because I'm traveling everywhere else. And I have a reason not to come here. It's not that far away. So this over here is the old school feeder, and that's the kind they used to have on the other side of the road before they put in the one they have now. And that swan is giving me the side eye. I have to get away from them. So the building to the back, back there, that's the other restroom that's on this side of the park. And as you can tell, that right there is a shed. It looks like it's about to hit the ground, but it's been there for years. And there's some more beautiful azaleas. Oh, I love azaleas. And that gazebo over there, if you look in front of it, it's a beautiful Japanese magnolia tree. I call it star magnolia. It's different names anyway, whatever you want to call it. So when it has the beautiful pink blooms around January, it's definitely a picture-worthy stop if you come that time of year. And as you can see, there's another parking lot up here also. So if you don't want to park on the main side, you can park on this side over here. And then you can just walk this side. Or whatever your heart desires. I do have to say that Isaiah is really pretty from this side. And these up here, you can tell where we had the cold weather over the weekend. Most of them's burnt. But you still have a little bit left over. I'm pretty sure that stone work right there on that gate, it's got to be original. Because they just don't do stuff like that anymore. Let me get out here and look real quick. This 
It says it's a Swan Lake Bland Garden. And design development presented to the city of Sumter by H.C. Bland, dedicated in 1956. Yep. So this fountain right here is really pretty. Can't read the name on it anymore. But it looks like a red bird and see their dragonfly or bumblebee. That's on it. So the sculpture over there at the road, that is the seven swans sculpture. And the reason it's not eight swans is because I think whenever we were here on the opening day of that statue being dedicated, he said if God could make the world in seven days, he could put seven swans on there. So it's a religious reference from the artist. Yeah, it was something like that. Saying or something like that. I can't remember exactly saying because it's been over two years ago since it was dedicated. This is a very popular sculpture here as well. It's a little boy walking barefoot while his shoes are back there. So they do have a visitor center here as well. I don't know if we're gonna walk in there today or not. We've never been in there. So they have a timeline up here on the Visitor Center now it tells about the different people. So this is First Lieutenant Irvin David Shaw. So Shaw Field was named after him, which is Shaw Air Force Base. Then you got Mary McLeod Bethune. And we got the Sumter Opera House, which is absolutely gorgeous. And Thomas Sumter. He was also known as the Gamecock. And it says, Welcome to Sumter, South Carolina. We're glad you're here. So it tells you to grab a beat, not a beat, a bite, or a brew, catch a fish, or a show. So that's rather cute. That's pretty. So this is another sculpture that's over here. This one is actually called Storytime. So it looks like a little kid is telling a story to all his little woodland friends. It's like got Mother Goose and some kind of frog prince and Peter Rabbit. Maybe the tortoise in the hair, I don't know. And the three little pigs. Obviously, it's not the three little pigs because there's only one of them, but anyway, you get the point. And this over here is the Iris Market. They have food and beverages, but I think they're only open on the weekend. So if you come on a weekend and you're hungry, you could do that. And that lets you know that the Iris Festival is Memorial Day weekend playground here so the big attraction is the old fire truck right there so before we get started they had this brochure in the visitor center and inside of it it tells you a lot of the history that I'm probably getting ready to read that I wrote down last night because that's pretty much where I got my information from I got it from the website and this right here is a meet the swans thing. So that's pretty cool. 
but that tells you all about the swans. Yep. This right here shows the map of the gardens right here. And it shows the visitor center, the bathroom, the fire truck, the bridge, all kind of neat stuff. And then that's the back of it right there. So if you go in there, definitely pick that up. So I do have my notes. You can see them right there. So anyway, I'm getting ready to read them. So in my notes, I got this from SumterSouthCarolina.gov. Swan Lake Iris Gardens is home to the only public park in the United States to feature all eight swan species and some of the most intensive plantings of Japanese iris in the United States. It was a gift from the, not from, but to the Sumter community from the Heath and Bland families. The gardens encompasses 150 acres with more than 120 varieties of iris that bloom in late spring. The gardens also feature camellias, azaleas, daylilies, and Japanese magnolia. Swan Lake has several festivals. During the year, this includes South Carolina's oldest festival, which is the Iris Festival. It's getting ready to come up Memorial Day weekend. I don't know if I'm going to come for that or not. I'm not. Who knows? I'm and off. it's free. It's, it's always free. I think everything here is free. It's yep. such a great thing they do for oh, the community it's here. Gift shop. You got to spend money in the gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the nice shirts in there. I should have bought one, but I didn't. But I can always go back. It's not like I can't come back anytime I want to. So, they also have an Earth Day celebration and Easter egg hunt the taste of the gardens and the very popular fantasy of lights i do have a video on that if you want to check it out it's from christmas time and then they have a few more that's not listed on the website so swan lake began in 1927 as a private fishing retreat for hamilton car bland that must be where the hc comes from and he was a local businessman at that time he was developing the 30 acres of swamp that is across the road from the main garden. So that's where it was just so swampy over there and nice little boardwalk through the woods. And it says he was landscaping the grounds of his home with Japanese iris, but they failed miserably. So after many consultations, he ordered his gardeners to dig all the bulbs up and throw them in the swamp. So <laughs> the iris decided that that was not gonna be the end of them. So <laughs> they burst into bloom the following spring so as they say the rest is history they have been referred to as a lovely mistake following bland's lead in 1938 mr a t heath senior deeded the additional acreage to the city with the stipulation that mr bland also developed the part of the garden so the heath i turned the page short so much last night gardens the heath gardens or what encompasses most of the park, you know, the gardens today. So Mr. Bland deeded the Bland Gardens to the city in 1949. The owners, no, the overpass. I can't even read my handwriting. This is so bad. That's what happens whenever you don't write every day. You just get real sketchy in your handwriting. So anyway, the overpass was a gift from the McDuffie family in 1994, which is a wonderful thing, because unless you go park on that side of the road, that traffic's just dangerous out there. So, how'd you like it today? It was good. It was good. We should have been back. I don't know why we hadn't. I wanted to catch it during Isaiah season, but I only caught the tail end of Isaiah season, but we might have to catch it in our season. And this, this is not far, you know, it's, it's near the middle of the state, so if you live in the upstate of South Carolina, you could come visit. If you live near the coastal section of South Carolina, you could come visit. It's not that far from anything. It's only about what, an hour maybe from Columbia, something like that. If it's there. If it's even that. It's a nice little stop. They got restrooms everywhere. Very nice people here. They've always got park rangers out here engaged in interactions with people. We see that all the time. They definitely patrol the park, so it's a definitely the most safe place to visit. So. I guess that's gonna do it for today. Mom's over there reading that brochure that we picked up in the visitor center. Handy dandy. Yes, handy dandy brochure. You can never go wrong for brochure anywhere you go. <laughs> Sometimes we actually do have to look like tourists, but even though we have, we've been coming here for years, so this is not like a tourist destination for us. So, 
anyway if you watched the video thanks for watching and bye see you later yes see you later bye again <laughs>